Well, hello everyone and welcome to the third restoration workshop of 2021, jointly run by the Inland Waterways Association and the Canal and River Trust. My name is Katie Woodroff and I am the restoration coordinator for the Canal and River Trust. This session today is titled What's Your Story and is being led by Joe Henderson and Joe is a freelance PR consultant who has previously worked with the IWA so she has great knowledge of canal restoration and canals in general. So on that note I'll pass on to Joe. Hi everyone. Um, okay, so my name's as as Katie said, I'm Jo Henderson. I used to work at IWA and I have probably met some of you. I saw some names in the chat box coming up of uh, people that I recognize. So hello to people that I've already met before and uh, nice to meet anyone new who's out there. So as Katie said, um, I'm going to be speaking today um, about how to tell your story um, through using digital media. I thought first before I actually start, I would actually I'd give you a little rundown of, of what digital media is. Um, so you kind of have more of an idea of what exactly we're talking about. Um, so digital media is, is any form of media really that you um, either view or distribute through a screen. So it's text or audio, video, um, anything that we tend to consume through the internet. Uh, I'm just going to check on chat that you can all hear me. Okay, yeah, good. Um, so it's it's websites and web pages, and also a lot of it nowadays is social media. Um, so that's opposed to print media, which is um, the old fashioned way that we used to get all of our uh, stories, which was through newspapers and magazines and books and things like that. Okay, so let's start. Um, let me just double check that I can click through. Okay, so. Why do you even need a story? Um, so as I've got listed here, your volunteers and your supporters need to feel like they know you. Um, if you're asking for money or you're asking for help or you're asking to form a partnership, the more that people feel that they know you and understand what it is that you're actually doing, or what you're trying to achieve, uh, the, the, the easier the sell is for you. Um, the media in particular, they like to be able to tell a story to their viewers and their readers. Um, a story makes you real. It can help you stand out from the crowd and actually give you a kind of unique uh, a viewpoint. It helps you to really explain what you do and why you do it. And then it helps, helps you connect with, with the wider um, audience out there. So local businesses, new supporters, volunteers, people that you'd like to invest in um, your projects and also partners. So uh, whether that's organizations or um, local people, community groups, uh, it just kind of gives you that voice. So developing your story, you now know that you need to tell your story um, and what, what is your story. Um, so if you have a think about it, it's really the, the journey that you have been on to this point. Um, and the more that you can share about that experience, the better. So as I've listed, can, have you overcome a, an adversity? Did you make a conscious decision to actually change direction? Did you think at one point you were going one way and then you realize that actually, you know, you needed to, to do something different? Um, successes and failures, any learnings that you've come, that you've come across during the time? Uh, funny stories, always good, anecdotes, things that make people smile, and also sad and honest stories, things that kind of actually give that kind of feeling of humanity to, to what you're doing. Um, and if you have lots of volunteers, it's nice to give them a bit of space in your story so that it adds that face, human face, to uh, the organisation. Um, don't reinvent the wheel. There's already people out there who are doing amazing things. And if you do some research into like-minded organizations or uh, charities that are a similar size to you, you can see how they are telling their story. Um, the smaller charities really do have some good storytelling um, ideas because they're really quite focused on what it is that, that they want to do and achieve. Um, there's an example that I've put here, which is uh, Horatio's Garden. Now, this is a charity that's actually named after a, a young boy called Horatio, who um, I don't know if you would remember, but 
they he went on a school trip and they were camping in the Arctic and a polar bear came into their camp and he killed a schoolboy. And that was this boy, Horatio. And previous to going on this school trip, he um, had realized the power of, or the healing power of being outside. And he had been spending quite a lot of time in a spinal injuries unit um, at a hospital. And he had really been campaigning to, to set up a, a, hosp a, a hospital garden there. So it had, after he died, his parents decided that they would carry on and do um, this campaign and get these gardens into all the different spinal injuries units. Um, so it has a very targeted objective and um, they've thought very carefully about who they've linked with. So they've managed to get lots of well-known gardeners and garden designers on board. Lots of them are the garden designers who um, are at Chelsea. And they've also linked with some really good um, organizations as well. So they've got Oxford University supporting them and they've also got the National Garden Scheme supporting them. Now, the reason why I chose this one, I mean, it's not relevant exactly to, to the canals, but you can see that if you get the right partnerships, then you actually can add quite a lot of um, strength to what you're trying to do because of the connection that you have with the partnerships. Um, so how much should we share? I mean, we don't need to share what we had for breakfast. You don't need to be getting into that much detail. Although if you actually look on Instagram, you'll find that a lot of people do like to share what they have for breakfast. Um, but you, you just need to share what feels right. And also what you think is interesting on different levels. So here um, you can see that I've set it out into the group level, a local level, and then more national. So in the group level, you're looking at the volunteers and the group and the goals and the plans for that specific group, um, your specific restoration news, boat trips that you might be um, launching and just individual actions right down at that group level. Moving slightly further up, you've got the local level, which is any sort of local planning issues, um, maybe events that are being run. You can look at local uh, grants that have been awarded anniversaries of a specific canal and also any restoration milestones um, and then going up further you've got national campaigns so you're talking about the actual national newspapers out there um, and their websites uh, so you know that's big issues issues like hs2 or covid those are much more kind of you know, broad and, and of interest to, to a much wider audience So once you, you've worked out that, yes, you're going to tell your story, um, you know what you're going to tell, you've then got to think about how you're going to tell it. Um, and it's just finding the right words for your group um, and also finding the pitching it correctly to, to the audience. So if you're speaking to the general public, you have to understand that they don't really know very much about um, canal restoration. So it's just not getting too technical with them. But then conversely, if you're speaking to people who are much more knowledgeable, you, you need to make sure that you're actually meeting them on that level. Um, and then just in terms of the wording that you're using, an older audience needs a quite a different focus. And then a younger audience, parents of young children, or even if you're talking to the children themselves, you're obviously going to kind of you know, just to change the, the way that you speak slightly. So yeah, the message there is just to think about how you can shape your messaging to reach the widest possible audience out there. So where should you tell your story? So it really needs to be a mix of places. I mean, we're talking at the moment about digital media, but you always need to also be aware that you've got that kind of offline print media and, uh, and the more analog um, focus there as well. So online, you've got social media, which we'll touch on later. You've got digital media, which is really um, the newspapers and magazines. It's the, their websites. Um, and then you've got your own website and then potentially your own blog. And then also you being a guest blogger on other relevant websites and, and blog posts. And you've got your own newsletter, which can go to your supporters, your members. Um, and then offline, you've got the old fashioned way. So the newspapers, the magazines. 
sometime soon, hopefully we'll be able to get back to, to running events and going off to fairs and festivals. If one of your objectives is to get more young people involved, you know, potentially it would be attending events at school, looking at the universe, uh, at the U3A or even the Women's Institute, depending on what those um, objectives of yours are. So in your area, it's quite useful to take a media audit of, of what media is actually being consumed out there. So you probably have a, a pretty good idea of, of the local newspapers and also the um, magazines that, that are operating in your area, um, whether you have any of those small local publications that come through your door and whether people, any, if anyone reads them. Uh, local radio, community radio, uh, uh, around here, I've really started noticing a lot more um, people talking about local radio, listening to local radio. Um, I think the whole community feel is really kind of picked up since COVID and, uh, and people are actually supporting the local area a lot more. You've got local websites, local bloggers, and then actually a really, really useful way of targeting a lot of people is to join active Facebook groups in your area. So you know, most towns and villages have a Facebook group. If you can join those Facebook groups and start messaging about uh, what you're doing, then, uh, then it's a really good way to target that exact audience that you want. Um, so where do you, <clears throat> sorry, where do you see yourselves? You need to work out where you want to focus your attention, where you want to spend the time. Because you could spend hours, days, trying to get a piece in a national newspaper, but actually what would that be? What would it mean for you? So you just got to kind of think, is it worth it? I mean, everyone loves to have a, a piece in the Sunday Times. Everyone loves to see you know, their name mentioned in the Guardian or the Observer, but really, is that the person that you want to be speaking to or would it actually be better for you, more beneficial to be speaking to the people who live in your local area, understand your local issues, and they're the ones that you, know, you really need to be um, targeting and they're the ones who are gonna come out and actually help you. So you just gotta work it out. Um, if you set up a, an idea, you set up the websites that you want to target, the people that you want to speak to, the, um, newspapers that have got a good website, the Facebook pages that you, you think are, are worth targeting, then actually you'll find out that you'll have a fairly decent solid list there. Um, you're expecting, I would imagine, to have maybe 20, 25 solid targeted um, focuses there. And, uh, and that will keep you busy enough, I'm sure. Um, so what is the point of it all? I think we were gonna ask here for you all to have a think about what your objectives are. I'm sure it's a mix of things, but if you were gonna think of one key objective for all of this, all of this work that you're doing, what's it gonna be? Is it to get more volunteers? Is it to raise more money? Is it to get um, a, the ear of the local council? It, you know, what, what is it that you want? So if you can just spend a second thinking about what that might be, if you could pop it in the chat, what your uh, main objectives are, and then I'll, I'll list out the ones that I think it's gonna be. Let's see if we've got any coming up here. I'm not seeing too much activity on the, on the chat screen there. So uh, I'll go ahead and put what I think the objectives are going to be. Oh, I've got something very good. <laughs> Cold, hard cash there, is, I like that, yeah. Yeah, so all of these uh, these objectives that you're that you're coming up with, I think that we've okay. That, that's interesting. Trying to target a more younger audience. So we've got here raise awareness, which some of you have put put down there. Secure funds, raise that money. Shift perceptions of what you're actually doing, and make people understand a little bit more about what you're trying to achieve with uh, with all of your activity gain credibility, build a supportive community. Yep, 
get more members or volunteers and I seem to hear say that people are wanting more diversity within their members encourage people to attend events change policy and then of course what I've put here all of the above so as we saw from your chat there these are the things that, that we're really needing to to focus on and some of them obviously going to be more important than others at times and when you have a specific focus then you can actually sort of change your uh, messaging to to kind of to push towards that let's see what we've got here okay so you're looking at developing your content you now know that yes you're going to tell your story you've got an idea of where you're going to tell it you've got an idea of what your objectives are so what are you going to say so we've got the news stories and news stories are obviously what's happening right now what's interesting, what's newsworthy. And those are things that you can put up on your website. You can sell into all of the um, newspapers and magazines. And then you can also post a link out on your social media. But think about other things. So you're, you're wanting to kind of populate your um, website or your social media feed, and you want to be doing it on a regular basis. So Yes, you've got news stories, but they're not all you're not always having news. There's not, not always something new to talk about. So kind of think about backtracking slightly from that. Um, and you can think about uh, looking at things that you talked about in years previously. So look back on old newspapers and old new um, and old uh, newsletters of yours from your actual um, organization and see if there's anything that you can post up on your um, on your website or up on your social media feed. Any old photos, I mean, people love to see old photos, don't they? So if you've got a, a photo archive, you can post those up, speak about how far you've come, um, ask if people remember what it was like back in the day. Um, you can also talk about future goals, which may or may not happen, but they're things that you're, you're hoping that you will achieve in the future. Um, you can look at what other organizations have done and um, comment on uh, on those. Really, there's anything and everything that, that you want to share out there. So hot topics, calendar events, milestones. Um, if anyone attended my talk back at the restoration conference before, um, and I was talking about uh, statistics and how much the press loves statistics. So, um, you know, if you can put facts and figures to anything then uh, then that's always good if you do a litter pick then it's good to you know say how many <clears throat> bags of, of uh, rubbish you've got out of the uh, canal or how many bikes you found you know um, there's there's always that kind of idea of giving numbers to things which they which everyone really likes um right where am i now here yeah. okay so this is the big one, social media. And social media is really the way forward, the way that things are going. I'm sure most of you have got a Facebook page, but um, there's, there's more you can do with social media. So this is, um, this is what we're going to be talking about now. Oh, I don't think my, here we go. Okay, so why social media? So most of the time, social media is free. There's, you don't have to pay for anything. The only cost to you, and it can be quite a big cost actually, is your time. There's a huge number of users out there. It allows you access to the people you want to speak to. And it also allows you to target exactly the people that you want to be putting your messages out to. Basically, you are, you're in control. You are the journalist. You are the editor. You're the decider of where your messaging is going. <clears throat> so there's many different social media channels. Oh, and Alex is doing a, a fancy poll here. So uh, what social media platforms does your organization currently use? Let's see how um, you vote on this one. Lovely. OK, so the poll has ended. Um, so that's 19 of you have voted. So the others, would you have said you didn't vote because that you don't have any um, social media at all. 
perhaps there is maybe we should have maybe had that option in there but it's interesting to see that that facebook is is the the one that that most of you have got and actually i believe that that facebook is um the the best one so it's good to see that uh, that people have got that but that twitter and instagram really do have a place linkedin has a place as well for very sort of specific um reasons and no one's on TikTok, which is just as well, because I'm not sure I'm really 100% can talk to you about what TikTok is. Uh, I might need to get my son in to, to talk about that. He's, uh, he's more the age group. Right, okay, I'm just gonna move that poll off now. So Facebook. Facebook can be either a group or a page. If it's a group, then it's a closed environment. People ask to join and you have admin who decide whether or not people can join and also whether or not their posts can be put up on the page uh, in the group. The page is, is, uh, is a similar idea, but anyone can find the page um, and anyone can see the, the comments. Um, so I believe that, it's, that Facebook is a really good way to build an online community. And it's also very good for reaching an older age group and also families. Um, if you're trying to get to a younger generation, perhaps Instagram is a better uh, place to, to find them uh, or Twitter even. But, um, you know, if you only have one, then Facebook is the one to have. Um, uh, Instagram is more picture led. So if, if what you're doing is very pictorial um, or you've got lots and lots of, uh, of pictures and archive, then Instagram would be a really good one. And you can actually link your Facebook and Instagram posts quite easily. Twitter is a really good one for getting to people who maybe you um, or haven't been able to speak to before. So counselors, celebrities, um, you know, people, people who you want to be messaging, they're probably active on Twitter. Um, and so if you've got some campaigning going on, Twitter is a good one to, to use. And then LinkedIn again, if you if you've got something, if you want to if you want to do something specific with the council or you want to do something specific with um, more business organizations, then um, targeting them through LinkedIn is a is a good option too. And at the bottom here, I've said that there's also YouTube to post videos. Now IWA has a YouTube channel. And um, Jenny was saying to me the other day that they actually have seen a real pickup on uh, views and subscribers on that channel. So um, you can set up a YouTube channel, post your videos to the YouTube channel as kind of like the storage area, and then you can share them out to your social media channels um, from there. But at least you've got uh, them there sort of stored so that people can look back on them and, and have a kind of library of, of what you've been posting. It's quite a, a useful idea. Right, so next one. So as I mentioned before, that you can do a sort of joined up posting. Instagram, Facebook and Twitter can all be linked. Um, so you could do one post and it could hit those three channels. But as I put here, you, you do so at your own risk, because if you've got one person who's following you on all of those three um, different platforms, then they see that you've posted the exact same thing out um, across all the different channels. And so it's not it's not great. It doesn't matter. But, you know, it's not it's not great. Um, it does save time and it does hit a much wider audience. But sometimes you know, you're not always wanting to say the same thing on the same channel. Uh, right, so frequency of posts. So this is often where people fall down. So you all, everyone starts off gung-ho, excited, right, we're gonna do this. And there for a week or maybe two, you post every day, it's all very exciting. And then you drop off and then maybe it goes to once a week. And then maybe it's once every couple of weeks and then suddenly you haven't posted anything since you know, three months before. Um, so you really do need to make a commitment to your social media, um, but be realistic. I mean, you know, you don't need to be crafting brand new videos every week, but you know, you do need to have a post going out a week. You can schedule some posts in, schedule. Um, 
and pre-plan them. There's there's some um, uh, websites out there or um, apps out there where that they will do that for you. The one that I tend to use for that is Hootsuite. Um, and so you can schedule in uh, your, uh, your post if you know what you want to be saying for the next couple of weeks or so. Um, but you should also always be aware that you might need to be reactive about things as well. Um, and it's not all about you just pushing out your message the whole time. If you spend some time reading back um, through your network and interact with people who are posting, then, then you start to kind of build more of a two-way conversation and a bit more of a, of a sort of supportive network. Um, it probably is an idea to make a plan. It doesn't have to be set in stone. Um, one of the things about social media is it needs to be kind of fairly fluid and you need to kind of react to things that are happening. But there are four main message types um, in, in my mind. You've got like the kind of sales message, which is join us, give us money, um, come and help us, you know, those kind of things. Then you've got the storytelling side of it, which is looking back on what you've done, looking forward to what you want to do telling a few stories, the funny anecdotes, the um, statistics about litter picks, all of those kind of things. Um, you've got your campaigning messages, which are much more issue led. So looking at the state of the towpaths, looking at the lack of facilities or looking at um, you know, what you're doing in terms of wanting to change things for your canal. And then there's the networking element, which is looking at what other people are doing, joining their conversation, offering them support, um, seeing if there's ways that you can work together. And you really kind of want to try and um, drop each one of these in uh, each time. I'm noticing more and more now with newsletters that are coming through from um, companies that you get, especially if it's a clo online clothing companies, I seem to get a lot of those. And so you get the, the one that comes, which is purely sales. We want you to buy our clothes. And then the next one that comes, it might be, have you tried this recipe or, um, you know, the, these birds have flown into the area or, you know, have you spotted any new wildlife? You know, there's, there's not always a push to sell, sell, sell. And it's, uh, it's becoming much more obvious in, in, in all walks of life at the moment. So you need to try and create a good mix. Um, visuals, I mean, this is something that I went on about in my previous presentation as well. You have to use good pictures um, and you have to try and tell a story with your um, with your photo. Uh, you want to include a sense of space. So if you're talking about the canal and you've got people that you want to take photos of, everyone likes, prefers a photo with people in it, especially media, um, try and show that they are at the canal. Don't take the photo of them away from the canal. So you're looking at the vegetation, you want to kind of have it so that they're standing and you're taking the photo into the water so that it's obvious where you are. Um, action shots are always good. You need to try and um, you know, create the excitement, create the buzz with your photos. And if you're using someone else's photos, then you must remember to uh, tag them if you're online, if you're in Instagram or um, or give them credit if you're actually sending it out to the media. Um, people, if you find a great photo online, people are more than happy to let you use it. It's quite nice to actually just message them and say, I love your photo, can I use it on my Instagram or can I use it on my Facebook? Pretty much will always say yes, but again, out of uh, courtesy, it's probably a, a good idea to, to give them that credit. Um, okay, so spreading the word in social media. So you're posting your posts, another, another poll from Alex here. So here we go. Okay, so it's a quite an, a, a interesting split there. So 41% do, 42% don't, and 32% uh, don't, and 27% um, what's the hashtag. I try and explain hashtags to, to my mom when I'm speaking to her about social media. And it doesn't matter how many times I tell her, she just doesn't really understand the point. So I'm just gonna move that uh, off again. So in order to spread the word, you need to be clever. So it's not enough for you to just be pushing your message out 
on your on your social media platforms to whoever might be listening or who has who has found you out of luck you need to try and be more visible to people so there's really three three ways that you can spread the word there's using the hashtags and i've put here using clever hashtags but any hashtag there's linking with like-minded groups so think about people who you are interested in following and who potentially are interested in following you and, and, and start following them, start becoming visible to them. And then the third is that you can use Facebook advertising, which we'll talk about a bit later on, but it is a very, very cost-effective way of, um, of targeting new, a new audience. So here we go, hashtags. So first things first, when you sent out a message, if you just say, come and join us, and there's no hashtag, then no one is going to find that. The only people that will see that message are your followers. If you said, come and join us, hashtag the canal name, hashtag your local area, hashtag nature lover, canal life, canal, any of those hashtags, anyone who's following those hashtags, which means that basically that, um, it's, it's kind of like, a, it's the description of what the post is. So people set up, um, and that, uh, set up searches to, to, to see what's being said about a specific thing. So I live um, in a town called Amersham. So I search hash, on, my, on my social media, I've set up hashtag Amersham. And then any time that anyone on social media posts something and they hashtag Amersham, I see it, even though I don't know who they are. So I don't know that person. I haven't followed that person. But because they spoke about Amersham, I see it. And then I decide whether I want to speak to them or not. So it's kind of like a web. It's like it's sort of spreading your message out further um, without actually having to know who you're talking to. So the idea here is so you would hashtag all of those specific things and anything else really that's pertinent to you. Uh, and then you can get even more clever and you can push out um, further with pick of the day or TBT, which is throwback Thursday. If you had a really nice um, old heritage photo, you could put that on and put TBT. But what you have to realize there is that the people who um, are seeing that that it's probably not relevant to them. So yes, it's nice that you get seen by more people, but are they the people that really you want to see it? So you can have 10,000 followers, but if they're 10,000 followers who aren't really interested, then are they worth it? I think it's much better to have 400 or 200 interested people who are actually looking at what you're doing and are interested in what you're doing and are potentially going to give you money, come and help you or spread the word for you. It just, it just seems more, more relevant. And this is how you can do that. You need to create your own network. So just spend a bit of time on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter, looking for anyone and everyone who might be interested in what you're doing. You can always look at what other people, so if you feel an affinity with a, an, another local group, I don't know whether it's the Ramblers or um, the Wildlife Trust, you can go onto their page and you can see who's following them. And then you can follow them as well. So you're kind of, without having to do too much work, you're, you're able to see who in your area is interested in what you're doing. So go and follow them look at what they're doing, tag them in any of your posts, which is how you, you can list their name out on Facebook or Instagram, any of them. You just put the little at symbol and then their name will come up. So tag them in something and say, I don't know, so Wildlife Trust, have you seen this is what we're doing? Or at the cycling group, do you know that we've relayed the towpath? What, you know, whatever it might be, there's there's options there to kind of Get, join other people's conversations. Um, and that's really what social media is about. It's about not being nervous, not being sort of shy. It's just literally sort of like jumping in there and saying, 
we're here, we're doing this great stuff, we need help, you need help, let's get together and help each other. Um, and so that's a that's a good way of creating that sort of that social network. And then you've got pay for promotions. So this can be done on Facebook. It's also can be done on Instagram. If you've got an event or a milestone birthday or something that you need to specifically raise money for, you can put a Facebook ad out where you target exactly the people that you want to speak to. You can do it right down to the fact that has that person ever shown any interest in a specific area? Has that person ever searched the term canal? Has that person ever shopped in John Lewis? Has that person, you know, it's so specific. You can drill right down and then you send out a, it's a, a, a boosted post it's called. Um, and you often see them come up on your, they come on you, the suggested for you and you get them on your um, on your feed. And that is a is a basically a boosted post. Someone's put that out there. And it costs a minimal amount. You pay, per, uh, like it's based on the amount of interaction, but I did it for an event and I got really quite a high level of interaction. And I paid in total for the three month campaign that I had set up, which had about six boosted posts in it. I think I paid like 7.99. So it's a really, really cheap and effective way of targeting a specific area that you want. So if you are looking for younger people, if you are looking for people in your local area or you're starting to work on a different stretch of the canal that maybe you don't know the people, you haven't had that much interaction with them, you can do a boost, a targeted boost and, and you know, really sort of get your um, message out there for hardly any money at all. And in the um, Facebook and actually on Instagram as well, you've got this thing called the ad center. If, you're, if you've got a page or a group, you have an ad center and you can get onto that and start looking at your, um, the, the, it's called the insights. So it's looking at how the post performed. So you, how many people looked at it, how many people interacted with it. If it's got a link on it, how many people click the link. Um, how many people followed you off the back of it? How many people donated if, it, if you're asking for donations? Um, and so it's actually a really useful tool that's there for you for free. And you can see how um, each of your posts are working and it just helps you to shape what you're saying. So if your sales posts are falling flat, then may, but your um, uh, historical posts are performing well, then you could post a bit more about the historical and kind of sneak a, a sales message in behind that. So you, you just know that you're speaking to the right people. Um, and I think that I am done now on that. Let me just have a look. Yeah, so now we're at the Q&A section. Well, thank you, Jay. That was a really informative insight into the huge variety of ways that we can use digital media to engage with old but also new audiences as well. Um, we've had a few questions come into the Q&A box. Um, anyone else that hasn't got a question in yet, please feel free to continue putting things in there. Um, so someone said, we could do with improving our website. IWA have an excellent website. Could you please help us by providing a template and advice? I'm sure we can get Jen to speak to you about that um, with regards to the a template or just some straightforward advice there. Um, the second question that we've had in, it relates to GDPR and using photos of people. So how do you recommend we tackle the GDPR issue? It's something that I'm working on for Buckingham Canal Society now generally. As a rule, um, and my day job is head of marketing, we should have signed permission. Yes. So um, if you're taking a photo of someone, you need to ask them first if they're happy to be in the photo. Um, and then you need to get permission from them it depends who they are if they're someone who's in the group then um you know you don't need the actual signed permission slip but if it's a, a member of the public i would just to kind of cover yourself off and also always to just check I, what i do is i do this i do a, a permission form and i use what i use it i say i'm just checking the spelling of your name 
so that's how I kind of get into it with them so it's not anything too kind of formal it's like you know are you happy to be um photographed they say yes and you just say I've got a form here I need you to sign it and also it will just help me if you can check the spelling of the name so it just kind of gets around the issue and then you've just got that piece of paper knowing that you know should anything happen um you know you're covered um so photos if you've got if you're doing a, an award or a presentation and and it's someone from the group then you as long as you've got their kind of verbal consent then I, I think that that you're covered on that but like I say and also children just be very careful um probably the best way to do children is to not have their face full on you just kind of take it from an angle so you can't really see who who the kids are but you get the impression and you get that feeling that um that there is someone there I think that's uh, that's the best way and then we've got the hashtags. I think hopefully you descri I described the hashtags. I have um, a question about that actually. Um, hashtags, are they used for social media and websites or is this just a social media function? So it's just a social media function. It's um, for the website, what you have is you have um, SEO terms, search engine optimization terms. And so on your website, it's actually quite useful to put a, like a cloud, I think they're called a cloud tag. So you just put in lots of words um, to help people find your website and find the stories on your website. So it's a slightly different thing. Hashtags are really only a social media thing that um, that you use to kind of just push out your messaging further. OK, thank you. We'll make sure we send out this set of slides um, from today's webinar so you've all got those notes to hand about the hashtags. Um, another question, do we need permissions for photos of people who aren't named? So if you're if you've just snapped a, a photo on the towpath, say, and there's a load of people on there and they're not face on the camera, it's not a big deal, then you don't need permission. You don't need to go to all of those people and ask them because they're they're not named, it's just a crowd, a crowd shot. Um, but if if you're naming someone, if you're actually putting a um a, a caption on the photo that says, so and so, then you you do need the permission from that person. Okay, thank you. Um, um, we asked the volunteers on our Bridgewater and Taunton Canal IWA Somerset registration form. Oh, that's okay. Brilliant. That's yes. perfect. So that's a really really good idea to do something like that. So if you've got your volunteers there, I, if they have to sign a health and safety form or if they have to sign some kind of permission form, if in that form you say we will be taking photos today to use on our social media do you agree, then that's, then that's perfect. You've got that covered off. I think that's really good. Okay. Um, Paul from the Narrow Boat Dressed has said, personally, I wouldn't put too many hashtags on a Facebook post. Is that a good policy or would you put say five or six hashtags? So Facebook, not so many, because uh, the, it's, it's generally not a dumb thing on, on Facebook to put a million hashtags on there. And I actually believe that five good, solid hashtags per post is really uh, enough, even for Instagram. I mean, sometimes on Instagram you see, gosh, I mean, 30 hashtags that they have running down the post. And it, it just is, unless it's something that's so exciting and amazing that people just cannot afford to miss out on it, then I would do, I would say five or six, like Paul's saying there, that would be my kind of recommendation. Sometimes if I get really excited, I'll do a bunch more, but um, but really that's uh, that's probably about right. And then if you if you want to try and um, get it to another bunch of people, then do another post and put some different hashtags on that one. You can just kind of spread the spread the load. Yeah. Um, how many of us should be involved in telling our story? Should it just be one person? No, I, I don't think so. I think. <laughs> One of the failings of social media, I think, is that it becomes too much of a job for one person. And then and then they, you know, they don't have time to do it all the time. And why should they? Why should it all fall on one person's shoulders? So I actually believe that the more people who are posting, the more people who are interacting, the more people who are out there and doing stuff, the better. Um, what you can do is uh, create a little kind of rules document that says, this is the kind of thing that we want to be saying. Let's limit our hashtags to six. Uh, you know, obviously, don't get involved in any massive arguments. Don't say anything that's contentious. Yeah, you, know, you can have a list of 
things but really I'd say that if you've got four or five people who are interested in doing it then let everyone have a chance um, I think it just spread the load and then and then it means that one person maybe only does one post every couple of weeks or so um, but that all of you are looking and are aware and are seeing what's happening out there Brilliant. I think it's good to it's good to kind of get yourself into a, a routine and and it seems crazy to even um, you know suggest it but I get up in the morning I make myself a cup of tea I sit down and I check social media to just see what's going on what hashtags are trending what's going on in the in the news is there anything that we can jump on is there anything that's happening is there a birthday is there a um a, you know one of those national days i mean there's a national day for everything national donut day the other day i think and national dog day um so you know you can just jump on any of those uh, any of those hashtags and it just is a way of sort of getting your voice out there getting you heard and getting you seen and people to kind of just be interested in what it is that you're doing brilliant um, we have been posting on Facebook for ages, but haven't got many people following our page. Where are we going wrong? Mm, well, so probably you're not um, putting out enough interactive messaging. Um, so if you're if you're just posting in your Facebook page, then you're only catching those people that are on your Facebook page but go out and post on other people's Facebook page. So if you're going to, uh, it, you, know, you could go into the local town Facebook group, or you could go to the Wildlife Trust face, Facebook group, or you could go to the uh, Canal Side Pub Facebook group, or you could go, you know, there's lots of places that you could go to start commenting and start putting little bits in. Not a big, you don't have to do a big self yourself, but you can just comment on what other people are doing. People will see you and you can say, come over and you know look at what we're doing on our page Great idea. you could also boost the post as well if you did that boost the post and pay for it then it just pushes you out um, and gets your, your name out there a bit more um two more questions here so if anyone's got um any more questions do pop them in the q a so you mentioned earlier creating a network with other organizations how do we get them to follow us so i think it's just by just by joining their conversation. So just by making yourself visible um, and having something to say, you know, so everyone out there is looking to create their, to, to broaden their network. So it's in everyone's best interest to follow each other and, and you kind of help each other out. Um, and I mean, you can even ask them, you could say, you know, we're really, we love seeing what you're up to, um, you know, follow us and we'll follow you kind of thing you can kind of be quite open about it um and people are everyone's kind of looking to to get their follower numbers up and their and their networks are kind of solidified so yeah thank you i think it's just it's just about being a bit brave i mean i think we're all it's the british way isn't it to kind of not push yourself out there but in social media it's fine to do that you just got to kind of i was just i mean i remember i remember the first time i ever sent a tweet I spent five hours crafting it, double checking it, making sure that it was this perfect tweet. And when I sent it, I actually had this kind of this scared feeling. And then you just realize like, you know, it's nothing, it's it's there and it's gone. It's like, you know, you just gotta kind of be brave and, and get out there and, and you know, kind of just do it. Be confident, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Is there a better time of day to post? I know that one's come up a few times before. I don't think so. I think, you know, as and when, um, I mean, obviously, if you're trying to hook on a day or you're hooking on a news story, the earlier, the better, because the news is gone. But, um, you know, really, if it's if it's your messaging, then just you know, it's, it's not supposed to be this like millstone around your neck. It's just supposed to be something that's quite good fun. Um, yeah. So Dave, Dave's asking here now have local radio. Definitely. Def going on radio, if you have got a spokesperson who is happy to go on the radio, get them on the radio, and especially the local radio stations now. I mean, these radio stations, they are desperate for content. So if you have someone, if you've got something to say, a good story to tell, and someone out there who's happy to tell it, go for it. That would 100% be my thing. And then the great thing about that is you can record it, you can get the little... Um, 
you know, the little recording, and then you put that up on your um, your website, and then you post it out on your social media. So it's like a double hit. So not only are you on the radio, but you're also then using that to go on your social media and you're hashtagging and linking and putting it you know, with that radio station. So it makes you, it gives you two or three or four opportunities to push that same story out. Mm -hmm. Did we try and recruit a few members who would actively relay up? Yes. So I think what, I think you have to have an unwritten rule that everyone in your committee or you know all the people who are kind of actively involved in the group will like your posts will share your posts and will comment on your posts to give you that kind of sense that someone out there is listening to you and then it just kind of helps to push it out um i mean and you can even um get a little bit more sort of formal with a bunch of organizations and say you know you follow us we'll follow you we'll like your stuff we'll share your news you share our news and you're kind of pushing it out and in fact how, so we've got 29 people on this call now if you all followed each other's facebook page each other's instagram page each other's twitter you're already creating that that kind of you know connection with each other so maybe you should all commit to doing that <laughs> great idea joe thank you <laughs> yeah, exactly well that's all the questions that have come in there um so it's about time to wrap up today's webinar we would yeah. have some feedback from you all um so we'll shortly send out a little email with a link to the survey form um and just thank you all for joining today and sharing your thoughts questions and experiences thank you to joe who has taken the time to deliver this webinar and thanks to our colleagues jenny and alex who have been working behind the scenes to make sure it all runs smoothly um hope you all have a lovely day and we'll see you soon bye Thanks everyone. Bye.